where you are chosen to become science leaders. Okay. I'm a mathematician. I get a lot of opportunities to be on national committees. Okay. I think if I was a sociologist, I wouldn't get those opportunities. <laughs> Native Americans, I know without even looking anymore, it's, it's psychology. <coughs> Native Americans all go into psychology. Okay, so I would like to talk a bit about my life. That's the background, okay? And you saw it in the question. But I'll talk a bit about myself. And let me look at some stuff here. I feel like I'm going to talk. Okay? I don't remember exactly when we started. Okay. Um, <laughs> Quickly, okay, my mother came from Mexico when she was 11 years old, and um, she didn't come by herself. She had to bring her 10-year-old sister with her. And her father was one of these people that traveled around and traveled around, okay? And he said, I've, 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 been over the, I've been to the top of the mountain. I've been to the United States. I've been to California. I've been to that. Great education. I'm sending you. And he sent her. My father came when he was seven with his older brothers, not with parents, just to go, in search of education, in search of education. Now, when they got here, my mother had to go to work because nobody really was going to take care of them. So in order for her sister to go to high school and graduate, my mother went to work. And so she worked for a Jewish family, cleaning and cooking, became an incredibly good cook. My father worked for a Japanese family, doing raising bedding plants and landscaping. And that's, and that's in his career. But they didn't go to high school. So the five, there's five of us, and so she instilled in us the desire and the value of education. And there's five of us. Four have graduate degrees, although two are lawyers. Okay, I try to read up. <laughs> okay. But she didn't say, here's how we're going to do it, and I'm going to take you to school, and we're going to I will help you, and I'll help you, and I'll tutor you in the material. She just gave us that feeling that one step at a time forward in education would take you somewhere. That's all she could do, to believe it, because she didn't know how. She didn't know how to get us places. So anyway, I went to high school. It was a very weak high school. And um, it wasn't in the, in the Chicago part of town. It was in the poor, white part of town. And it's not clear who the teachers liked, if anybody, but they certainly didn't go after me, even though I was clearly the best math student in the school. So I was never counseled to go to college. I went to work. And as working, I stood next to, this is all of you from Mississippi, a long, lean, white male from Mississippi. They moved here. We would pack muscles, fiberglass in the mouth. Oh. Richard, you're smart. Go to college. Every day. September comes, okay, Jim, okay, I'm going to community college. I went to community college. It was a great experience. I was a star in community college. Two professors got me and said, you're really good, you should go to UCLA. Okay, where is it? We'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to UCLA, and there, I was not a star anymore, but I learned to survive and hang on. And I was okay. I was okay, I was a solid B student. Then I had a couple of friends who were gonna to go to graduate school. Norm and Wellington, we're going to graduate school. And I said, Norm and Wellington, you're not good enough to go to graduate school, you shouldn't go. And they said to me, well, we're gonna go. And I said, but I'm better than you. And then they said, well, you should go too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll go. <laughs> so I did. And then I, I worked hard and I did well, and I got a PhD. And then David Sanchez, the only minority faculty member at UCLA came up to me when I got my PhD. He said, what are you going to do, Tom? I don't know. Because this is like in community college. And he said, well, I've talked to the chair of the department at Wisconsin, and you're going to Wisconsin for a postdoc. OK. <laughs> so I, I came back, and I told Gene, Gene, pack our bags and get the two kids ready. We're going to Wisconsin. <laughs> and we did. Now, my point to you is, Jim, the two professors, and Sanchez determined my life. See that? It isn't that every day I needed somebody to tell me something. But Jim, the two math professors, and Sanchez determined my life. From Wisconsin, 
he just went on. And uh, you know, I was faculty at UCLA, at Wisconsin, at Rice, at Stanford. I'm monotone increasing. That's the way we minorities tend to be. Okay? <laughs> that means we get better with time and with age. Okay? <laughs> Happiness is getting better. Okay, starting out low and getting better. <laughs> Unhappiness is starting high and crashing down. Okay? No, I'm monotone increasing. And, and that makes me very happy. Um, good enough is good enough. I was never the best. So I didn't have to deal with situations where you said, oh, I used to be the best and now I'm not. Yeah, 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 maybe in grammar school and in, I was best in math. But I always felt I was good enough. And good enough was good enough. Don't have to, I tell my students, Good enough to take you to magic places. But you have to believe. You have to believe in yourself and believe that you can. That's what I got from my mother. See, my mother made us so confident that we could do anything we want. And people didn't want us to feel that way because we were minorities. But we did. We didn't know how. So good enough is good enough. But it's got to be good enough. OK? Um, let's go here. Yeah, okay, so good enough is good enough. So I didn't plan to reach for students, and you know, I produced, I've had 40 PhD students, 20 have been women, 18 have been in the world. I didn't plan a life of um, saying, this is what I'm going to do. But what I realized was when I got to a certain point, that there were so many like me who were falling through the cracks. Like, I could have fallen through the cracks if it wasn't for those four people, remember? I can help them. I must help them. But I must wait until I have established myself. How many people, I saw in those time periods, how many people cared and reached, but they weren't in position. They weren't in a stable position. They didn't have tenure. I'll get tenure real fast. If they can't get rid of me, then I'll do some good things. And I did. I got tenure real fast. That's embarrassing. OK. So I speak out on my convictions. On many committees, on national committees, on the rights of missions, uh, even the president. The President Hackerman was president when I was at Rice, and he said some things, and I contradicted him, and I hadn't, didn't have tenure. I was a first-year faculty member. And he told me, you're an enemy of the university. And everybody said, you'll never get tenure. The president tells you you're an enemy. But the issue that I was fighting had to do with fair issues in treatment of women, minorities, and another issue. See, I would speak Spanish to the maids in our building, and they loved that. So they, on Friday, they would bring me enchiladas and tamales. <laughs> <laughs> but they would always tell me, see that person, my boss? He's stealing. He's really ripping off the school while they're doing their thing. So I went to the president, and the president said, no, this is a very distinguished person. You can't do it. Anyway, to make a long story short, I would write on every one of them. And then the president, Hackerman, he tells me, he didn't say you were right, and I apologize. He just looked at me and said, all right, you're doing some good things, and I'm going to nominate. He was president of the National Science Board. He said, I'm going to nominate you to the National Science Board. That was his way of saying thank you. But of course, I couldn't make it. I was too young. Eventually, I was on the National Science Board. OK, so you can't. Powerful enemies and powerful friends. As you get into positions, disagree professionally and respectfully. Don't make powerful enemies. Okay, you can make enemies, but make sure they're not powerful people. <laughs> <laughs> I have enemies, but I have a lot of friends that really will fight for me. So in positions, like I know for, for a fact when I was elected, I was the first Hispanic elected National Academy of Engineering in 1992. I know the fight that went, and I know who were fighting for me and against me. I'm not supposed to know, but I know. So it had that I didn't have, the enemy that I had that was fighting against me wasn't that powerful because the friends were more powerful. Okay? So you think of things like that. On committees, I've been a lot of committees. 
And the first time I went to the National Science Board, you know, I was appointed to the National Science Board, and I was really awestruck, and I said, wow, 